Castle with Tech Sparks. I'm here in Twitter today with my guest, Othman Arati, the Arati in English. And uh, he's the Director of International and Growth. He is the uh, founder and investor of several, several startups, uh, including Mesa Labs, uh, Zero Cater, uh, Ecom, Other Inbox, Brandshot, Fruitsy, and Learn Roost. Let's start with a company you founded, uh, Othman, which got acquired by uh, Twitter. Uh, Mr. Labs, or Tommy to be precise. Which is the company behind GeoAPI.com, a powerful location engine for developers, and Tommy, a new location information site. Uh, tell us, please, how did you come up with the idea, and how long did it take you from the point you started uh, the company until the exit point? Um, so, uh, my co founder and I have been, uh, we're both at Google at the time, uh, and we've uh, discussed starting a company together for a while, and we've been thinking about ideas and uh, brainstorming in general for for a while, and uh, uh, when we started, the main thing that we, the main idea, the main concept was that there will be there was going to be a big change in how geo uh, and the internet interacted. Um, and though even though, for example, there are a lot of great tools like Google Maps, etc., that were the first generation, that with the iPhone and Android now making geo very accessible, um, it there was going to be a big wave of new applications and uh, new uses for geo-based information. Um, and so that's essentially kind of the general uh, idea or the general approach of what we were thinking about. Um, and at the beginning when we started the company, it was, we were building a website that was called Tell Me, um, that was essentially trying to uh, build uh, local communities in a scalable way. Um, and over time, what we actually realized is that it was potentially even bigger opportunity um, around building the infrastructure for everyone else to be able to use um, with apps like Foursquare and Goala, etc., that were starting to use uh, geo based information. Um, and so, and we had uh, a very strong engineering team um, that was able to build that kind of infrastructure in a scalable way. So, um, that's where we decided that we were going to, you know, uh, it could be interesting to be the, uh, the provider of that. Of that um, and, uh, and as soon as we launched it, we had thousands of developers that showed up and wanted to use it. So, uh, so that worked out. Yeah, they, uh, we, uh, we were initially quite surprised by just how much demand there was. Sure, sure. Uh, so and cool. how long did it take you guys from when you started the company to exit? So that, that was uh, under two years. It was uh, if it, since the company got founded, it was maybe uh, a year and nine months. Okay. Um, but we had, you know. It takes, you know, before you even sure, get started, right. you know, there's a lot of you know, thinking, et cetera, et cetera, like, that happens. Yeah. Um, but the actual official lifetime, I think, is for sure. Yeah. Nine so let's talk about the financial side. Um, you know, we you know that we raised seed and Series A from Sequoia Capital. Um, how did that come about, and do you have any uh, tips for the audience to, uh, about how, you know, how to go about raising funds? Mm -hmm. the, uh, I mean, the fundraising process is, uh, is an interesting one. I mean, it's, uh, for everyone who's kind of does an early stage company, one of the you know, biggest aspects is you know, getting the backing. You know, um, it's one of the uh, things that oftentimes entrepreneurs think of as one of the big challenges. Uh, but I think in general, the right way to approach that is um, as a partnership and as a um, uh, as at some level a um, part of building your team, uh, as opposed to a a threshold. I think you know one mistake that often, especially like first time entrepreneurs. This was my second time, so I've been through the, uh, the the cycle once already. Sure. sure. Um, the um, well, this, oftentimes on the first in the first time, it's uh, there's a temptation to or it's it's easy to fixate on that as being the objective. Yeah. But in reality, the objective is to build a company that's successful and viable. Sure. And funding happens as a side effect of that. Um, and so, and, and so that, that's in general kind of like a, an overall mindset. I think that helps a lot. Um, and then in terms of like the tactics of raising money, I, mean, I think there's a number of there's a long list of things that come into play. And I don't know if you want me to. Uh, I think if you're going to top, you know, one um, of those. Uh, you know, some of the key ones are you know, um, uh, you always want to be raising money when you don't really need it before you really need it. Um, you know, the, uh, 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 so there's a, a, a quote that says, if you ask for if you ask for money, you get advice, and if you ask for advice, you get money. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I think that's kind of, it, it kind of holds true in some sense. Sure. Sure. 
um, there are some uh, another important aspect is um, one of the big challenges always, or one of the big steps in raising money is to have the first lead, the first person, meaning one of us who kind of takes a step forward and says, "Okay, I'm going to lead this round." Um, and, and for that, the, the choice of the person is, and the order of the firm is very important uh, because that person really sets the tone for everyone. Um, and for that too, it's, uh, it's it's really important to view it as a to approach it as a almost like an interviewer, right? like you know, some sense, some kind of, kind of some case where you're you are choosing one of the most important participants in, in the future of your company. Sure. Um, and having a conversation, the conversations around that tone, um, I think sets it up in the appropriate in the appropriate way. Um, so that's another important uh, aspect of the fundraising process. Um, Another one is kind of choosing the uh, phase at which you raise money, where um, it, it helps a lot for it to be at a point where the, um, the financing will make a material difference to the company, um, where in terms of how risk is perceived and how it's, uh, it's generally difficult to get uh, investors to just kind of unless it's unless you, you you're showing up with your personal brand then you know sure. people will just fund you because you're someone famous. Yeah. Um, the especially with first time entrepreneurs, it's important to um, have it helps a lot to have gone through a few stages of, of validation. So for example, having built a, a strong team uh, or having built especially in the consumer space, um, building um, Early versions of the product that are getting traction uh, is very important. Like, you know, for example, if you're building an iPhone app to to do games, um, in some cases, you know, the, in some in many ways, like the biggest determinant of whether you're successful is whether you can build a game that's engaging that people will end up using. And if you have an early prototype or early version of the game that's not yet engaging, mm -hmm. it's not money that's going to make it more engaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, kind of. Being able to really articulate the impact of the financing work. And if you have something that's already engaging and you're doing financing because you're like you're demonstrating that the engine is working at small scale and you can tax it by sure. having sure. dumping money on top of it, yeah. that's 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 attractive. Um, if you have something that's still a research project, uh, that's and or still kind of at the completely open stage. Um, Raising money at that at that stage, you know, it's a very different conversation. Mm -hmm. if, if someone is willing to back you, they're they're truly backing the individual, mm -hmm. uh, which is always the case at some level. But it's I think it's a different okay. different volume. Yeah. So let's talk about the exit now. How how did that come about? Did they knock on your door? Did you approach them yourself? How how did that? Come so we 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 had the the time we had actually a, you know, a lot of cash. The uh, uh, the API was doing very well. Customers, um, and, but we did approach Twitter because we wanted to be a customer of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, uh, we started a conversation with them, uh, around that, and they um, kept bringing us in for more and more conversations. And the people in the room kept getting more and more larger. larger. <laughs> so at some point, they're like, "Well, you know, we it's, geo is too important for us. We just outsource it, mm -hmm. uh, but we'd like to bring you guys on board." And uh, it was interesting for us because I mean, we things were going very well on the, on the startup side, but uh, you know it was an interesting stage of, in Twitter's life where um, uh, you know I was telling someone uh, that uh, from that I'm recruiting to come onto my team right now about you know when you start a company as an entrepreneur and you dream of success, mm -hmm. and especially in the consumer space, the image that you have or I think of is to be building something that the entire world cares about and to have all the resources to really be going for it. Mm -hmm. But also, the, in general, what you're dreaming about is some, the, the game is still going, right? Like it's, you're still kind of in the middle of the, of the action show. And I think literally this is the phase of, that Twitter is in. And I, and I felt like, you know, that entrepreneurs can spend the entire career searching for this window. Um, and so for me, that, that's one of the things that was most attractive, so the opportunity to be part of. You know, the leadership team of the company that's changing the world, sure, sure. Um, and you know, uh, getting getting a chance to you know, have a hand in that. So definitely, yeah. that's uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so moving on to working for uh, Twitter right now. Um, can you tell us what's your role and how do you think this is the growth strategy for Twitter and the expansion plans? Sure. I mean, the uh, thing about the product is that uh, it's at a stage right now where it has uh, truly global FPM um, and, uh, I mean, and global attention and brand words. Um, and, uh, the, and we're at the beginnings of this, these phases, this phase where you know, it is touching people all over the world um, and we're on our path to becoming you know, a truly mainstream and accessible product. Um, and the biggest part of growth, uh, I feel, is making it truly accessible for people sure. that are not, you know, investing, you know, two hours in configuring Twitter, and uh, and where it becomes a tool that people can use without needing to put in a heavy investment in it upfront. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, for example, like the most recent release was very much in that mindset where there's a big simplification of how the product is laid out. Um, we've done in mean, my team a lot of work around really simplifying that original initial flow and um, how people get introduced to the product. Sure. And stuff. Sure. So looking at the uh, the air market for Twitter, yeah. uh, what's that like? Is it big? Is it um, small but promising? Yeah. What's what's your take on that? So we haven't we haven't released any numbers, but it's um, it is it is growing very fast. I mean, it's uh, it is still kind of in the early stages, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously with everything that you know the last year and. Uh, in all of North Africa and the Middle East in general, it's been a, a huge year. Uh, and uh, uh, it's been very interesting to see the product being used in, you know, as part of changing the world in right. you know, the very material way, right? Um, and so, um, so that's been something that I think has been incredible. But, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the growth rate has been, um, I don't know, percentage wise. Uh, whether it's at the very top, but it's actually, it is like, yeah, I know for sure that's like in the um, top, top Congress of, uh, uh, like all the Arab countries are. Sure, sure, yeah. that's, that's great. Like from end to end, basically, yeah, it's uh, the same uh, And the, um, uh, and the interesting thing too is that with all these things, like whenever there's a big thing that happens, you see a big spike, and then, you know, it starts tapering up, but then what happens is that it stabilizes at a higher, much higher level than where it started. Um, and so we've seen that go like, up oh, again and again every time there's something new that, that starts happening. It's sure. like you see that kind of step up. So looking at the, uh, now we're going, I guess, technical, I guess, or you know, business maybe in, in the mm -hmm. Twitter space. What's the most effective way of, of uh, acquiring traffic or product followers on yeah. Twitter? What's, what's your favorite? As an individual? Um, you know, it's, I think at the end of the day, the the, the couple of thoughts or comments about that. Um, okay. I think in general, um, the attention to the number is something that uh, maybe doesn't really matter as much. Where it's you know like the difference between five thousand and twenty thousand followers um, maybe actually isn't as important mm -hmm. um, as truly having the right audience um, because like the. You know, Quality of followers and the kind of responses and the reach that you get from them is um, that's where you really get it on scale. That's right. right. Like for example, five thousand high quality followers are going to retweet you is far more impactful than twenty thousand that are just random people that don't that are not you know necessarily that interested in the content and information. And so I think the the biggest aspect of it is to focus on the creation of interesting content and to you know, be very uh, responsive. Like so, one of the things that do, does engage people a lot is is the interaction. Um, you know, Twitter is probably the only place on, on the web or in the world where you, you make everyone reachable at some level. Right? Like you can you can touch any any individual and you know connect with them directly. Um, and that aspect, I think, that's how you get the right audience is by engaging. Um, and uh, so I think that's kind of the main the, the main thing I would say is like. Um, there are ways to kind of artificially boost the numbers, but the the most effective way to actually get reach, if, like if it's the audience you really care about, right. is to be very engaged. Like you know, like even with businesses and things like that, you see businesses that you know really put effort in engaging with people and responding to their tweets and things like that. Sure, those are the things that really kind of 
bring, bring people back and make them pay attention to what you're saying. So in order to get those quality followers, I, I guess the best way is maybe doing research on who you want, you know, as far as those followers to be. Mm -hmm. um, is there a certain way of researching these guys on Twitter? Or? Um, I mean, using the search engine, like searching for the topics, right. finding the conversations. Like, so for example, you know, say you know you're uh, interested in you know uh, the startup space right. in, the, in the Middle East, right? um, figuring out you know who, who the thought leaders are, interacting with them, you know, when they when they post interesting things, uh, you know, re re retweeting those and interacting, you know, like you know, if something if an interesting conversation is ongoing, uh, you know, just like. Oh, does it make sense to outsource to more outlets, for example, right? Like, you know, engaging in those conversations. That's where you kind of become part of the conversation. Right? It's a uh, big part. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, so I guess we, we just touched base on that, but how about a startup? Uh, you're a startup and you want to use tw you know, Twitter to market your startup. Um, any tips on going about that? I, mean, I think it's still very much in the same same aspect, yeah. It's, because at the end of the day, right, like the, the product is very simple, right? Like it's a, it's a, it's a, a very you know uh, lightweight way to uh, to engage in a, in a very scalable manner. It's like it's Twitter is the most effective way to create an audience, you know, that we've ever had, right? Yeah. And so uh, so focusing on um, on interacting with the audience, and um, you know, you, you see, for example, like even with big celebrities, like. You'll see people who are, you know, very famous that have you know, five million followers, like two sets. But one of them always kind of starts responding to people and does things like that, and tweets, you know, irregularly and tweets interesting things. Not just, you know, uh, like, yes, you can have, you, you can, you can be a celebrity and have a lot of followers and tweet like um, a link to your CD on Amazon mm -hmm. every week, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't bring that engagement. Sure. You know, there you're just kind of you know, you're not using that audience. Whereas you can have someone with the same number, but that where whenever they tweet, like Lady Gaga is amazing. Like, you know, she's always ha really engaging with her users and uh, you know, interacting. With them. Sure. Um, and that's kind of those are examples where you know, I think that you get that that, that scale of that leverage. So okay. So if you look at talent, um, has Twitter been used a lot for you know recruiting and finding talent? And if so. How do people do that? Yeah, actually, it's uh, actually one of the one of the engineers that uh, we just joined my team. Uh, I reached out to him on Twitter. Actually, I uh, I, uh, I found out um, his uh, I, I saw his name somewhere on uh, I think on GitHub, <laughs> and uh, and I, I I he wasn't in my network, so I didn't have any way to easily reach him. Um, so I, I literally just found him on Twitter and sent him that message and asked him to send me a DM. Mm -hmm. uh, if he was interested in having a phone call, we had a phone call, and that's how we ended up joining the company. And this would be private? Yeah, okay. so you can take the conversation from public to private. Okay. Um, and uh, and uh, so what you can do is you can just send that message to a normal person. And that's a public message, so you just say, like, hey, you know, my patient's talking to you about Twitter or something like that. Right. Follow me and send me a direct message, mm -hmm. which is private, um, and mm -hmm. we can talk. And then you start the conversation. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, it comes in handy. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, I've, I've, done, I've done it for a number of things. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a funny example, but I don't know if you ever saw the, this video called uh, The Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. it's, it was just a funny video that uh, on YouTube was uh, very popular. There's a guy who, who, who speaks in that video with a funny voice. And uh, I thought we, were, we had an internal video that we were making about some engineering thing. Uh, and I thought it'd be funny if he narrated that video. Okay. And I, I had no way to get hold of him. You know, I had no idea who he was. Uh, but I just sent him a, a tweet, um, and he responded, and then we had a conversation. Uh, and then he flew over from LA and did the video for us. That's really fun. Uh, so yeah, it's it's amazing. It's like it's uh, uh, it, obviously these kind of things right now are not you know super easy for sure. any person to to use, but it's it's actually available. So. Yeah. So. Looking at um, tips and you know, some tricks and you know things uh, that people could leverage in using Twitter, do, you know, do you have any uh, suggestions on that front? So in terms of using Twitter, I mean, like the the as a consumer, right. I think one thing that's interesting about it right now is that we we have so we have over well over a quarter billion tweets a day, 
right? Um, that we go through the system. Uh, and so there's a huge amount of content. Um, as, a, as a user, uh, the, you can, if you're not following the right people, you can be missing everything, sure, right? And so, right now it's still kind of, we're still at the race stage and we're making that easier and easier over time, but uh, one of the biggest tips is to um, uh, putting a little bit of effort to find friends, connect with people that you know, by importing Gmail or, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, address book, sure. Uh, or on the phone, actually, it's also very effective to find people that are in your address book on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, so, one is doing that, um, because that also kind of, the social connections sure. give you access to, you tend to be friends with people that have similar interests as you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one vector to open up a lot of very interesting information. So that's one big tip, actually, that um, is very impactful. Um, another one is, um, right now, it's, it's, it's to, is to put in a little bit of an investment to, to find the information mm -hmm. and to diversify it over time. Mm -hmm. um, that just makes it very interesting because you know, at some level, you know, my objective with Twitter is that like, you know, it should be the place that tells you everything you should know. Right. You know, like you just open it and it like, tells you everything you should know. Right. And so, uh, and that, you know, that is not yet plug and play, but it's almost that, right? Like it's getting there. So. How about uh, <coughs> tools? Um, what, what tools do you suggest um, that would also again help using Twitter? You know, yes. there's some some out there, TweetDeck and yeah. you know, TwitPick and other ones. Which one do you suggest using? Um, I think I mean the uh, the Twitter apps have gotten much much simpler now. Mm -hmm. um, that which I think is has has been very good for users. It just makes the the essence of what Twitter is much more accessible. Um, so that's definitely my, my, my main recommendation. Mm -hmm. For more advanced users, like things like um, TweetDeck you know, are, are nice if you, people have like multiple cards. Really power consumers, like if you want to be able to see a bunch of columns and you know, see a bunch of very different kind of information. Sure, sure. Uh, but I think for regular people, it's, uh, I mean, I, I use just regular Twitter apps and uh, it's uh, the most effective way to, to get a lot of control. So how do you use? Um, actually, I just use Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a good question to ask you know, for the audience. Yeah. Um, so, how is working for Twitter? I know you guys still, like you said, you're you know expanding, and there's a huge opportunity um, in the near term. But how is how is the culture in, in Twitter? Uh, I know you work for Google. Yeah. Um, do you, what do you you know? Is it better here in terms of culture? In terms of you know uh, ease of mind, or is it what's uh, what's the culture like here? Yeah, it's it's I mean it's a very unique company. Um, it's, uh, I'm mean, having a great time, um, and it's, uh, <clears throat> in terms of describing it, it's, um, it's a place where I think in the last, um, you know, couple of years, there's been a very much a rising to the opportunity that the world, that we're fortunate the world has given us as a company, um, to, um, to really impact, um, a fundamental way in which humanity at large communicates, right, and I think that's something that, is very deeply baked into the psyche of the company, um, um, so that's very exciting, you know. That is so, and I think there's a very strong sense of that mission uh, in, in the entire company. Um, it's an interesting mix between a company that um, is a technology company with you know very uh, strong technology roots and uh, has very interesting like te te technical aspects to, to the work, um, but is also very much a social company. Uh, where you know the core of how people think and you know the, is, is around users and around people. Uh, you know, there's you know, a lot of aspects around. You know, I think that you know, a company that uh, I think you know a lot of other companies as well you know, uh, admire is Apple in terms of how it, it's an incredible technology company, but the focus and the essence of what the company is about is around servicing users and doing building things for users. And I think Twitter has a lot of that same kind of inner mindset. Sure. Um, and, uh, and so it's, you know, it's a deeply technology company, but it's fundamentally the service of, of users. So, um, so that makes it you know, very interesting and you know, uh, very fun, certainly. So, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're also an investor. You've invested in several companies. And I don't know if you're still involved in any of those companies, but out of the ones you funded, which ones are the ones that 
I guess the one that you're excited about the most. It's like asking someone uh, which child they like the most. <laughs> uh, you know, you gotta be biased. Yeah, you know, I've I've been fortunate to work with a lot of you know really impressive and interesting people, um, and uh, you know I, I can't say that there's one that you know I uh, you know the number like a few that um, uh, you know been. Uh, Doing some very interesting stuff. But there's a next tank I got acquired by LinkedIn recently. Um, that's uh, one that you know, I think we, you know, uh, did very well. Um, you know, uh, there's there's actually a, a longer list that I oh. I haven't I, I don't I don't yes. publish, but okay. um, but you know, it's uh, uh, there, there's there's a lot of really interesting ones. Uh, sure. Fair uh, enough. You know, a company called Euclid uh, Euclid Elements that I think is doing very interesting things. Um, Learn Boost. Mm -hmm. uh, is also a very interesting one. Actually, uh, George uh, is also involved with that one. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. But uh, but yeah, like I mean, by and large, I mean, it's uh, it's it's. Uh, I've been fortunate to kind of get to work with very interesting people. So. Sure, sure. So I guess in closing, um, what uh, pointers do would you give, like to give to you know our Arab entrepreneurs who are working on their startups and the uh, you know they want to aim at great exits. I think the first of all, I think in general the reason to start companies oftentimes is or to get into like especially in the tech space. Um, I don't know if the exit is necessarily the objective. Sure. Uh, like I think the, um, the 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 biggest thing is it's a uh, it's one of the easiest ways or one of the most hanging fruit in terms of building things that is are used by a huge number of people um, and. Um, but so in terms of you know like uh, tips, I mean like the actually I have a talk that I give. Uh, I can send you the links. Sure. Uh, things yeah. But it's it's it's, um, it's basically the uh, ten things I learned, or I can't remember the word ten, but things I learned from starting a company uh, that you would never find in a book. <laughs> okay. Uh, but there are a number of very simple uh, kind of thoughts and um, kind of pseudo insights. Sure. Uh, but you know the uh, a lot of the essence of it is you know like uh, you know focusing on the team. You know there's some aspects about you know thinking about teams that, that I think is maybe a bit different than what you would hear in business school class okay. things like that. But I, I can I can absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll share with my audience and uh, I'll make sure to get that from you. Um, well, thank you, Ahmed, for this insightful interview. And uh, like always, love to have you again in the future. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you.